All right, guys, thanks for coming along, checking out this new video on a new 328 Ferrari restoration that I'm working on. So these photos here are from the 1989 328 GTS that I fully restored last year for my local client. So I posted a couple of videos on YouTube, and in the month of December of 23, I was contacted by the owner, an international owner of an 86 328 GTS, and uh, he inquired about having the car sent to the United States to have it restored. So I was like, listen, I'm, I'm all for it. If you're willing to send the car here, you know, send me some photos. We did like a virtual uh, overview of the car. And, you know, photos, of course, everything looks wonderful uh, in a photo. But then I started going through some of the photos, and he sent me a bunch of videos. And this is kind of where you see a little bit of the fear of this project. The car is an absolute basket case. When I mean basket case, almost every single component on this car has damage and cannot be saved or restored. Uh, it just looks dirty in the photos. The car was in a collision, and you'll see further along in the video uh, what's going on. And also, when you see a box of parts and rusty parts, that's another concern for someone that does restoration work uh, as far as what you're going to get when the car does arrive. Even the fuel filler neck was completely rusted shut. Uh, just everything in the car just needs attention, serious attention to detail. Uh, the fiberglass panels in the back, you can see they're all chewed up, broken, broken gel coat. That's not a problem. I fix those all the time. But another concern here is the left and right fuel tanks have cracks in them because somebody jacked up the car from below the fuel tank and cracked the bottom. So those are actually out being repaired right now because we can't locate new fuel tanks. Somebody drilled a hole into the dash to put a battery disconnect switch. The seat trim is missing, which is impossible to find. Uh, you name it, it's wrong with this car. And also another discovery from the photos, the oil pan is cracked and somebody TIG welded and seized the plug to the oil pan. So that was another $3,000 component that we had to get. So, so far it's been exactly four weeks to the day since the vehicle got here. The car was transported in a shipping container on a boat internationally, dropped off at the port of Miami and then delivered to us by a car, common freight carrier right here. We're just unloading it off the truck exactly four weeks ago to the day. So I'm gonna make a couple of episodes of this project because a lot of you guys like to watch it. And a lot of inquiries have been coming my way to do Ferrari restorations since a very popular restorer in California recently went out of business and went bankrupt due to some fraud, Dolly Calloway. Not really sure what happened with that, but I've been getting a lot of calls from people that were scheduled to send cars out to him. Now they're thinking about sending them to the East Coast after they see a lot of the work that I'm doing. So every day I'm posting updates on my Instagram feed and in my Instagram story. So if you guys really wanna see what's going on daily, go to my Instagram, subscribe, follow, stay tuned to the channel because episode two is gonna be a big one. This is where the car is gonna finally start taking a shape and we're gonna start assembling it. So the car's not running and driving. The car got here, not running and driving boxes of parts and a lot of parts are missing uh it's kind of one of those things like i've been restoring cars for over 30 years this doesn't scare me uh i kind of knew from day one what we we're gonna go wrong uh and doing a piece of bondo cracked off the fender lip so we got the car in the bay as soon as the car got there i says you know what let's not even waste time let's just tear this car down immediately these are just some photos just showing the overall condition of the car and it's dirty extremely dirty one of the dirtiest cars covered in grease tar multiple layers of undercoating and spray paint and it took well about 80 hours to clean this car up to uh to get it so we pulled the motor out of the car almost immediately we broke the suspension down you can kind of see it this is everything on the workbench everything is kind of categorized you can see there's a lot of rust a lot of undercoating the bushings are supposed to be welded the welds broke and the bushings are wobbling around that's a serious concern because the car did take a collision on the driver's side rear wheel and i'll show you guys more as the video goes on all of these parts are going to go out to get replated the rear suspension forks were bent i had to source new ones more expensive parts so just to let you guys know when you ever hear the expression check this out somebody put gasoline oh in the overflow tank that's what I told you. They filled By the, uh, accident, because I, I don't think they knew the where the fuel filler was. And, and not only did this cause a big problem, uh, not only do we have to circulate and clean out the radiator and redo all of that, but it severely Crazy. damaged the overflow tank. And you'll see it further along in the video. So, like I said, this car needs everything. When I'm talking about everything. So, whenever you hear the expression, a cheap Ferrari is not a good Ferrari, I can't even express that enough. These are the brake calipers, all beat up, all rusted. The pistons were seized. 
All these parts are on the bench. We bag, tag, categorize them. The steering rack was broken. The, the casing was broken. And one of the inner tie rods was smashed, most likely from the cars taking a collision. And, uh, you know, we kind of put everything in piles. We photograph. We bag and tag everything. We take hundreds of photos because we have to know how this car came apart and how it's going to go back together. And, and we kind of do everything pretty neatly. And then everything goes into crates. After we fully disassemble the car, we clean everything up. And it goes into crates, and then we start doing the refinishing process. And I handle all the specialty refinishing of all the important components on the engine, on the interior, on the exterior, on the suspension. So here's the overflow tank here. Kind of looks good on the outside. It had so much rust on the inside that I soaked it in a chemical tank for days, and I could not descale it. So $600, I had to buy a replacement overflow tank. Uh, here's the exhaust connecting pipe. These kind of look okay, not the greatest. Somebody disabled the air injection system. You can kind of see it there. They put drywall screws and they kind of welded them to the manifold. It's just like really butchered up. Uh, unfortunately, when these cars were cheap, they got in the hands of the wrong mechanics and the wrong owners. And this is the fate of a neglected Ferrari where the parts are substantial to bring this car back to show condition. Uh, these wheels are the magnesiums. Now, Ferrari made uh, two versions. They made Campagnolas and they made speed lines. This car has the rarer, more desirable speed line wheels. You can kind of see there's layers of, of tar, of undercoating, of dirt and grease throughout this whole car. Uh, and then once we strip down the suspension components, you can kind of see it more. And uh, just the, the electrical rigging. I mean, look at the way somebody rigged one of the ignition wires. Uh, it was just unbelievable. Uh, unbelievable what was done to this car. Everything looks really cheesy, dirty. Here's the engine on our engine lift stand, kind of put over to the side. There's one of the fuel tanks. It's leaking. You can see all the gasoline all over the floor. And, you know, it's a little scary looking at the car in this condition. But I've done cars worse than this. And I know when this car is done, it's going to be a showstopper. As much as it needs, it's going to be an incredible car. Uh, the car also has a rigged oil cooler line that nobody in the world seen before in terms of the dimensions. So I'm taking some photos and I'm, I sent the line out to get replicated because the line is sheared and it was leaking oil all over the place. Here is a front coolant pipe where the nipple completely corroded off. Here's more electrical ground issues and rigging. I mean, the electrical system. All of this is going to be soldered, heat shrinked, and fixed. But look at the engine compartment. Look at all the grease and oil on the left and right side on the floor in the shop. The amount of grease that came off this car is just so substantial. I've never seen a car this filthy in my life. This is a main cooling pipe that goes up front. This was cracked. You can see all the corrosion. And I showed you the video earlier. You can see it's all the rust. So we're gonna have to try to locate this now. You can just kind of see. This is your Ferrari in a million pieces. So there's plastic caps that go in here and over here. These are unattainable. I just found them a few. They're a few hundred dollars I had to buy. <laughs> Two hundred dollars each. So somebody realized that the cap was missing, so they took like RTV silicone and he just squeezed it in here to kind of fill the void. I mean, like little stuff like that, you just gotta scratch your head and laugh, but that's what we're working with here. So, but we got all, I got all new old stock, original Ferrari parts for here and for here. These parts, you cannot obtain these. You can see here, this is the rust I was telling you about. So there's definitely some rust in the cow. We'll work on that when the car goes to the body shop. But um, I mean, like I said, the body's in pretty good shape. It's just, that's all of this, this rigging. I mean, look at this. They took a wire and they rigged it and stuffed it into there with like a piece of wood. I don't know what they did. And it's just, yeah, this is a, this is a mystery. But all of this is going to be cleaned. The dry ice guys are coming tomorrow. They didn't come today because of the weather. But uh, we got to figure out what we're going to do. What we're going to, this fuel line. This is definitely scary. You, you don't, you just don't. You don't do something like that on a fuel line. That's dangerous. This car could have exploded. But uh, yeah, just showing you, this is the car torn down. All right, guys, as you can see, we hired a team to come to the shop and do dry ice cleaning of the car uh, just to help clean it up a little bit. But I'm going to be honest with you up front. Dry ice cleaning is great for Cosmoline on an older Porsche, Mercedes, BMW, but on a Ferrari that has this much undercoating and grease. It's not very cost effective and it needed substantial amounts of hand cleaning to get this car workable because we don't want to work on a car that's this disgusting. So here I'm detailing the engine. 
I'm using the Auto Fanatic Professional Wheel Cleaning Foam with detailing brushes. Look at the amount of grease and oil that's coming off this car just by me foaming up the engine and letting it naturally gravi you know, gravity pulling it down onto our lifts table. You could just see it, but I spent five hours on the engine and transmission cleaning it up just like you see here. This is the F100 foamer. We offer these on our website. These are made in Italy and made to our spec. And this is just with the Auto Fanatic wheel cleaning foam. I didn't steam it. I didn't pressure wash it. This is all done by hand using the foamer and the IK Inox 6 sprayer. I mean, the more I cleaned it, the more and more grease just kept coming off and coming off. Look at all that grease. But wait till you guys see the end results. It's just, you know, it's just time. You got to go in there with a lot of detail brushes, a lot of fine, intricate work. But look at the amount of grease and dirt that's coming off this driveline assembly. And this is what we don't want to work on. We don't want to work on an engine that's this messy, that's going to contaminate all the refinished parts. So this is what you have to do when you're doing a restoration. You've got to get your assemblies clean and just move on to the next step of the restoration, which now we did the timing belts, the tensioners. Look at that engine now. Looks great. Okay. So now it's, that's put over to the side and we're going to be jumping back on that in a couple of days. Now, if you look over here, these are all the assembly components off the engine. Now, somebody painted with spray paint the cam covers. And below, when we stripped it, we found another disaster. Uh, somebody couldn't get the valve covers off, so they took a hammer and hammered dents into the valve covers. And we had to TIG weld and fill all the metal in, grind it down, shot peen it, and get the finish back to where it had to be. Here's an intake runner restored. Here's a timing belt cover restored before and after. You can kind of see it. It has a nice natural cast aluminum finish. Here are the intake runners restored, all new fuel injectors, Viton O-rings, all new fuel elbows on the opposite side. These things look mint. Here's a little teaser of the intake manifold with the correct silver wrinkled finish. And uh, here's a close-up of the valve covers finished, pressed in with a new bushing. All new replated uh, blow-by unions on there. Also have all the plastic clips that are going to go in there for the spark plug wires, but I'm not going to put those on yet. That's one of the little less details that we'll do. Uh, also a new cap for the oil filler because that was all corroded and damaged. But uh, no, they look absolutely great. You can kind of see it there. It has a nice natural uh, appearance. And then moving on, like I said, we gutted the car down to everything. Uh, we pulled the electrical system. This is the original fuse box, which is notorious for causing electrical issues on this car. We immediately found the headlamp switch is completely busted and cracked. You cannot buy those new. A new old stock headlamp switch is about $5,000. I had to buy one from a vendor in Switzerland. This one here, you can see the terminals burnt out. That was linked to the fuel pump assembly. Here is the replacement um, coolant hose for the front. So we're moving right along and we're making a lot of progress. There's the engine again, just a little bit of a beauty shot. So as we chemically stripped all the wishbones, there were a lot of stress cracks, I guess from the car being in an accident. So we had to go in there and we had to retig all the stress cracks to make sure the wishbones were structurally sound before they go into the next phase of refinishing. Now back to, to the magnesium speed line wheels. They look decent in the photo, but every single wheel was severely bent. So take a look at this video and you can kind of see the excessive runout that these wheels had. And it was to the point where we were able to fix three of the wheels successfully, but one of the wheels, one of the rear wheels, which is I think the wheel that took the impact on the driver's side, could not be fixed successfully. So I just want to show you guys here a close up. So the driver's side rear wheel was all chewed up, covered in Bondo, and the wheel was cracked. Now, can't find these wheels anywhere online used. The Speedline wheels are extremely rare, whereas the Campagnola wheels, you can find them on eBay for a third of the price. So after a worldwide search, I found a new old stock, brand new, original rear wheel Speedline in Italy, and I air freighted it in. This wheel cost over $1,700. So as I'm going through this video, I'm explaining to you what parts are costing, and I'll tell you in the end that this is a substantial amount of money going into bringing this car back to life. Now, if you look at this, this is the driver's side rear upright. Kind of looks good after I cleaned it up. But if you look carefully, there's a lot of boogered welds on the bottom of the housing. So this was actually cracked, and somebody welded it, and they welded the bolt shut. So when we tried to disassemble the car, we couldn't get the bolt out. We had to cut it. So I talked to the customer. I says, listen, we're at this point now. 
let's get a replacement. Here's a replacement that I located from a vendor in Australia. Another $1,700. I had to air freight that in through DHL. These are the front hubs, all new wheel bearings, all new packed, and I'm just putting some corrosion protection uh, back on those so they look good for the years to come. These are the tireless brake calipers again, but you're going to love this because wait till you see how these things came out. So they're all rebuilt, replated, new pistons, new seals. The bleeder valves were seized up. We had to send those out and get those remachined. But uh, now they're actually original to the car and they're show worthy. So as I'm looking at the chassis, you know, cleaning it, spending day by day and hours cleaning it, I'm looking at it. I'm like, you know what? There's something about this middle floor panel that really bothers me. You can kind of see all the evidence of damage and impact and dents. So after closer revelations, you know, I start to realize, I'm like, yeah, this car definitely landed on something and something hard. So I want to remove this panel. But before I removed it, I found a brand new old stock panel in Europe. And I had to bring it into the States in an oversized box was another $2,700 just to get this replacement panel. You could see all the damage on the floor because the car f flew off the road, probably off a curb, and it, and it landed on something. You can see the, the shear panel's torn. Everything's broken. But I'm going to show you some more interesting information as we go along with the video as far as what I discovered after I pulled this panel down. So this panel is held in with like a, like a seam sealer and just a bunch of pop rivets. You can see it, it, it is really, really in terrible condition. There's no way to restore that panel. You would just be wasting your time and money uh, spending hours trying to straighten it out. So here is the brand new panel uh, with the Ferrari stickers and everything on it. This is old stock. This is me after I stripped down all the, all the rails. There's all rust and all sealer and undercoating and stuff on there. So now after I'm looking at the chassis and I'm like, you know what? Something doesn't seem right here. After all that damage on the floor, the cross rails on the unibody, on the chassis, were actually smashed in and not straight. So you can kind of see the impact zone right there and the impact zone on the other rail was really, really bad. Now, if I don't fix this, then that expensive panel that I just paid almost $3,000 to get is not going to fit right, and it's going to be bent and warped, taking the shape of those bent chassis rails. So I spent a considerable amount of time welding studs and with the slide hammer and pullers, straightening out the frame rails and doing the body work and getting it to where it is here. You can kind of see everything is stripped down, but we didn't strip the original Ferrari sealer, which is all that red and grayish stuff. We took all the undercoating, all the grease, all the paint off. Here's a checklist. This was only a couple of days ago, uh, Friday on the 19th. And this is where I was prepping the car, preparing it to get it into epoxy primer. So we use a PPG 2K epoxy primer in black. Okay, Saturday afternoon. This is just a little bit of an update of me scuffing the chassis the next day, check for imperfections and get it ready for paint. So I mixed the 2K chassis paint and I shoot it through my HVLP SADA gun. And uh, you can see here, it looks absolutely outstanding. And then all the panels are all redone and fixed and all new screws. Now you can see the finish. It has the same soft tone that the original one layer of undercoating had from original. So it's going to give a nice original clean appearance. And it's just going to make this car so much better to work on by starting with a good, solid, clean, restored foundation. The chassis rails are fixed. Now these are the front fiberglass, uh, what you call gravel guards. After I stripped the undercoating, they were all cracked and broken. I had to do all the fiberglass repairs. I had to fix the gel coat on both sides. And then after they were done, I spray them with 2K epoxy primer. And then I spray a diluted polyurethane bed liner material. And I give it a, a texture where it still retains the natural weave of the fiberglass. This component here is a really tough part to find. This is called like your cold start valve, almost like the fifth fuel injector. I am not putting this on the car considering how much work went into restoring the intake manifold. So I located a brand new old stock part and I imported this directly from a vendor in Turkey. Another few hundred dollars just for that. This is the original fuel filler neck that I tried to restore, but the rust was so bad it totally broke the spring loaded flap. So I ended up buying a brand new old stock from Italy fuel filler. All right, guys, moving right along, you can kind of see the restored manifold and the throttle body assembly coming to life with the correct silver wrinkle finish, which is really hard to duplicate. This is a brand new throttle position sensor. The original one is totally shot and covered in undercoating. Uh, here's a bunch of parts that I take off for plating. I tumble them. I, I have a special process of getting them ready for finishing, and my refinisher gets them back to me within five to seven days, uh, which is incredible. Most platers take you know, six to eight weeks, they lose parts, but we work with a really good team 
and this is what makes my restorations go a lot smoother and faster. Uh, you can kind of see the throttle body. It's all mucked up, spray painted all in one color. It's just wrong. So as I'm disassembling the throttle body, everything's photographed, everything's bagged and tagged. Uh, these are all the parts going back together as I start to do the final assembly of the throttle body housing. And there's a little component right here that's called a grub screw. That is one of the most impossible things to find. And it's not even on the Ferrari parts diagram that that comes from an old school Ferrari Dino. And I imported that from Germany from a Ferrari Dino parts specialist that cost me over $120 for that tiny little screw because that little detail, I am not gonna put a generic screw in this car considering how much level of passion and perfection I'm putting into restoring this car to a show-worthy car. So another thing too, you kind of see here, this is the, uh, the intake manifold kind of all put together with the throttle body and all the fittings. This is like perfect, it looks awesome. So I spent a considerable amount of money in the last couple of years developing the silver wrinkle finish. So the paint originally comes from Italy. The problem is you can't buy the paint from Italy and ship it through air due to hazmat. So I ended up going through some hurdles to get the paint here. I bought a quart of it. A quart of this paint cost me $900. And then I took a sample of that and I sent it to a bunch of coating manufacturers that I work with and we replicated it. So now we could produce and restore all the vintage Ferrari components, the runners, the air boxes and uh, intake plenums uh, all in house and we're going to be offering this service to anybody that owns a vintage Ferrari to send in your parts and we will correctly do the red wrinkle and the silver gray wrinkle and send you the parts back. So it's going to be something that's going to be available on our website soon. But if you have any inquiries, you could always contact me direct. Uh, we are taking in jobs as we speak right now. So moving right along, I already have the, um, the carpet pattern uh, for the 328. So I started making the carpets because the carpets in the car are all shot and they smell. So that's just another little head start that I get. Uh, this is me today. I was pre-drilling all the holes on that bottom panel. Now this bottom panel is going to get powder coated black just for durability on both sides. And uh, like I said, once again, we're at the conclusion of the video. So this all started with the client internationally seeing the restoration work I did on the black 328 GTS. And he inquired about getting his car done. And like I said, this is a, a basket case car. So when we talk about a cheap Ferrari, it's not a good Ferrari, but unfortunately in this particular case, being that there's so many parts missing and so many parts damaged, I'll let you know at the end of this video, so far we have over $55,000 invested in parts. We have new glass, new weather stripping, new suspension components, all those new sensors. I mean, you name it, including the new wheel, the new rear hub, the new cooling pipes, everything that's been broken on this car had to be replaced. There's just no way you could find these parts used anymore because as these cars have become more valuable and more desirable, parts are becoming harder and harder to get. So thanks for watching this video and please subscribe. Stay tuned. Episode two is going to be awesome. You guys are going to see the entire chassis put together, the special finish on the rotors, all the bolts are going to be plated, all the chassis marks are going to be put back on there. So we started with a very, very rough car and now the chassis is, is built up, it's fixed, it's refinished. All the other components are being refinished and when the car goes in the body and paint, I'm going to work on the interior and finish the leather seats myself with the door panels. And we're going to get this car finished hopefully by the end of the summer. So thanks for watching. And anybody out there that's interested in any restoration work on a Ferrari, Porsche, Shelby, or other significant car, please contact me. Let's discuss your project. And if it's something that we can fit into our schedule this year, we will get you scheduled and on the calendar. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next one soon.